What's up guys, tonight we're gonna to be installing this Barnett crossbow crank handle and pulley assembly into a Barnett Raptor FX. Um, this is kind of a universal kit for a lot of Barnett crossbows. I know that it fits the Ghost and the 400 Quad, some others. It's not a perfect situation for this crossbow. I've already installed it. I'm not real impressed with it, but it will work. And I'll show you those issues I'm having with it as we get into the video. But anyway, we're going to start installing this. Uh, this is kind of what comes in the kit. You get a couple screws. And there's a cocking mechanism that latches on the back of this cog gear right here. See yeah, how it's got the teeth? Well, um, anyway. I've stripped one of the screws on that because I over torqued it, so that might be something you want to keep in mind, don't over torque it. So I can't take it out of the crossbow, it's already, it's still installed, I'll show you what piece I'm talking about. Um, anyway, this is the rest of the kit, minus that one piece and two screws. So anyway, let's get started with the video. I'm going to set the crossbow up here and we'll go through the steps of how to install this. And uh, I'll show you the proper way to run the cords because I messed up the first time I put this together installing these cords and it kept jumping the shiv on this and it wouldn't cock right so there is a certain way that these pulleys have to be rigged and everything else so I'll go through that in the video as we're going so and this is not I'm not a professional by any means but this is just what I've come across while installing it on my crossbow so let's get the video started Okay guys, right here is what I was talking about. This lever here engages the, you can see it right there as I move it back and forth, see that? That's what engages in that wheel or the cogs on this teeth and it keeps it from just spinning back if you don't hold pressure on it. Um, so you should be able to crank this up, take it off, shoot it, or if you got it cocked in the stand and you want to decock it when you get on the ground, you should be able to remove your aerial Pull this over like that and slowly release the bind on the crossbow without having to shoot a bolt into the ground or you should be able to decock your crossbow basically. So anyway, first step with this is going to be laying your ropes out. I'm going to zoom back out here so you can kind of see. You lay your ropes out like so. I don't know if you guys can see this on the camera. You want to hook it on your string. You want this right here to be running on the inside of here. So basically you would take this piece, stick it in the hole. Right here is where it goes. And another thing, when you get this crossbow, I don't know about some of the others, but in this style crossbow, there's going to be a plug here you have to pop out. A plug here you have to pop out and this is open so basically pop out the round piece pop out the side piece and you're ready to go but anyway you're going to take run your cables like i got them all right the inside cable needs to be hooked to this the outside cable is going to have this piece on it and when you hook it on your string you got to hook it so you know which way you're running you need to make sure you don't cross your strings for one. You want to make sure that the string that is attached to this is closest to the crossbow. And you just stick it in there. And if you look right here, there's a little slot cut into this crossbow right there. See how it fell in there? All right, there's a groove all the way up through here for this. It's going to fit down in there. All right, you take the other string and you lay it over the top just like this because that ear right there is going to hold the string as it goes across. It's going to go right in there like that with the string behind that piece, just like so. This is your outside string. This is your inside string. So when you've got the crossbow pulley like this, 
Your inside string that's on the inside closest to the crossbow is going to go to the crank and this is going to go to the anchor, this outside piece. Alright, we stick that in there, we stick that in there. Repeat the process on the other side. Just as I showed you, you turn it over. You stick this piece in like so. You run it through. Make sure your cords are straight. Everything looks good. And then stick this piece in over that string. That's when you're going to use this long screw that's kind of smaller. There's two screws we're going to need here. You got this short fat screw and the long skinny screw. Use the long skinny one for the anchor bolt. You just stick it in there and they provide the allen wrenches you need. So you just stick it in there, start screwing it together. it over make sure your strings are still good everything's good crank her down tight now that you got that tight don't want it over tight because that rope's got to pull in and out behind that pulley see Pop this piece out. See, it's got to pass back and forth through there, and if you got too much bind on it, it's going to cut into the string. Now, these gears, this cog piece has got a big pin, two small pins, or three small pins. The big pin and the big pin have to line up on the same side. That way, the strings pull evenly. So, We'll put that in there like so. Once you get the ends lined up, you'll feel it click into place. There it went. Take the shorter screw, the short fat screw, go in on the right hand side of the crossbow, like so. Insert your screw. Use the large Allen wrench included with the kit. And you screw it in till you get it snug. And then you'll have to use the handle to put in on this other side. The handle has a big screw in the middle, two ears on the other side. Screw that in, lock it into place. That way you can use it as a backup as you tor torque this uh, big Allen screw down. Good and tight. Now let's check see how it works. Everything's functioning right. As you see I got a bind on it and I can let go of it and it holds the crossbow back. It's still cocked. I can go all the way to full cock, no problem, but I don't want to cock it right now. I want to show you how to come back and release your crossbow. You put a little bit of tension on the lever, slide it back and drop it down. Now you're decocking your bow. Okay guys, I forgot to mention earlier, they give you these little rubber pieces with this crossbow kit. And they must fit the other crossbows because they don't fit this Raptor. I've tried to figure out where I can put these things. They won't fit here. They don't fit back here. So, not real sure what crossbow these go to, but they don't go to this one. So, anyway, um, I've seen a guy on the internet who zip tied it up here on his scope. And I'm not a big fan of putting something on my scope that's going to be pulling on it when you try to crank it down to keep it out of your way. 
So this is where I run into the problem of what to do with this once we're done. Okay, say we've cropped our crossbow and everything's done, we need this out of the way. Where are we gonna put it? Because it's supposed to go here on this cheek piece, but it doesn't fit on the cheek piece because it puts a bind right here. So you can do it. Matter of fact, it runs out before it even gets down there. And I don't want it up here pulling against my scope because this is supposed to be the most accurate way to cock your crossbow and then you're gonna pull on your scope, kind of counter reacts itself. There's no reason to have a bind on your scope just to keep this from flopping around. The only other place I found to put it would possibly be right here. And then you have to lock it in, make it go on a click. But it's still on your Picatinny rail for your scope. So I don't know how well that's gonna work. And this handle right here, it, when you're through um, doing it, you can either put it down here out of the way like this. I don't know if you guys put it down out of the way like that. Or you can just take it off. And I, I'm gonna just put it in my backpack. That way I don't have to worry about it. I just kick it out of the way. It's not in my way. But the one thing I have noticed by doing it right here, even if it doesn't pull on your scope, because there is a screw right here, so that kind of would help it from interfering with your scope a little bit. But when you put your eye up here, this is kind of in your face. All right, guys, here's the problem with this thing being right here. It's right in your face. And I don't know that I really like it, but really this is the only place that you can put this thing that I can find on this crossbow. But anyway, this is what I'm talking about. You get up here on the to be able to see down the scope and open the hole up in the scope and you got your nose pressed right up against it. And as long as it works, I'll, I'll be all right with it. Uh, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Okay guys, here's the real question. Is this worth 70 bucks? In my opinion, I would say no. Just more for the fact of how it has to set on the bow when it's not in use. It's not bow specific, it's more of a universal piece and I would think for 75 plus dollars that that would fit the bow perfectly. Should be no question of this is where it goes. This is how it mounts up. Everything fits. It mounts in the bow perfect. It's just when it's not being used, it doesn't really have a place to put the, the, the pullback carrier. Um, and for that, I have to give it about a five out of 10. Other than that, it looks like it's gonna work fine. Uh, and as long as it doesn't interfere with my sights on my bow, I'll probably use it. But if for any reason I feel like it's gonna kick the bow off, I'm gonna trash that bastard, use the string cock that came with the bow, and we'll just go that way, because I'd rather not take a chance of missing a good buck or a hog over something that's convenient. And basically that's all that is, is convenience. It basically lets you decock your bow or cock your bow. But the string cock I've got for the bow works perfectly fine. So decocking a bow is not as important to me as being on sight so if this interferes with my sight picture whatsoever I'll just go get a decocking arrow and put it in the quiver and that's how we'll do it from here on out but either way I'll take it out tomorrow set up the chronograph we'll check the speed on it I'll give you my personal opinion if it's good if it's not good that way you don't have to waste your 70 bucks 70 80 bucks whatever it was and uh, hopefully this video helped you guys figure out how to install it.